I've been asked before to share a complete walkthrough of a project and I thought this backpack is a good example for that, so let's dive into it. I like to use Firefly to create elements of, uh, for my concepts. I had this idea how I wanted the drawings to look, but I'm not a child and I can't really draw like one, so that's why I asked Firefly to create some drawings for me. These are the variations I got from this uh, very simple text prompt. I ended up creating like 20 different set of bugs and then I said, okay, this will be enough. Look at them, how cute they look. I was really happy with the outcome. In Photoshop, I created a 4K image to use as a texture map later on. I cut out all the bugs one after another using the magic wand and the lasso too because that was the fastest and most precise in this case. I changed the color of some of the bugs to create a very nice variety. It took some time to get this done, but I really enjoyed this creative process. After I was happy with the arrangement, I created a seamless pattern at the end using the offset tool so I could fill in all the gaps. I opened a new project in Sampler and I chose the denim material as a base because I wanted to have a nice strong fabric texture and a canvas-like look. I dropped the JPEG into the viewport and I set the output usage to base color. I was almost happy with the material, but I added a light dirt filter to it at the end so the fabric texture is uh, even more emphasized. When I was ready with the material, I exported the 4K texture map into a folder. I also decided to send the material directly to Painter because it was just uh, so practical and I can use it immediately. I had an idea to create a custom pull for the zipper of the backpack. I created a new file in Illustrator and I dropped uh, the black and white image of one of the bugs that I quickly prepared previously in Photoshop. I used the image trace tool to convert this model into a vector shape. Then I opened the CDN materials panel and used the inflate tool to create this nice puffy shape. You can inflate both sides if you check out this little checkbox. When I was happy with the shape, I exported the model as an OBJ file. I found this backpack model on Soft and Cydia sets and I decided to customize it a bit by removing some parts and adding this custom pull charm to the zipper. I also added this bug shape to the big buckle on the front of the model. I wanted to keep the front side fairly simple so the bug pattern is nicely visible. At the end I subdivided the whole backpack and I exported it as an OBJ file. You have the option to merge some parts but I wanted to keep them separated. I dropped the file into Painter and I went on to bake the model. After that it was done, I started to add the fabric material I created with simply dropping it onto the parts where I wanted to. In the properties panel I changed the tiling until I was happy with the scale of the pattern. In this project I was working with different texture sets per object parts because I wanted to have higher resolution texture maps and more flexibility and I found this was the best solution for that. I always add the dirt generator to my textures, it just helps with the realism at the end. You can do it by creating a new fill layer, add the black mask, right click and add generator. Then you can select the generator you want and here you can find all the other generators as well. In the properties panel you can customize a lot of settings until you reach the right amount of dirt on your model. You can change the opacity of this layer as well or change the blending mode in case you would like to blend it better with the layer under it. You can copy this dirt effect onto different parts of the model using the instantiate across texture sets command and select the parts where you would like to copy the effect. I got this idea that I wanted to texture the seams with a different fabric that harmonize with the color of the bug material. I did this by masking out the seams using the polygon fill tool. You can create a new black mask and start selecting the polygons you would like to texture. You can choose from different fill modes, I use the UV chunk fill. For this project I use mostly materials that come with Painter, but you can import any materials from Substance in the assets too. For the painted metal parts I use the simple rubber material that looked a bit close to what I wanted to achieve. For the straps I used a simple linen fabric, I really like the way this one looks. Simply drop these materials onto the different parts of the model.
for the rope I use the material called climbing rope and just change the colors in the properties panel so it matches the rest of the bag. To be able to use the zipper tool, create a new layer and select the zipper tool from the brushes panel. Start creating a pass by clicking on the model and it will automatically follow the surface of the model. You will see how many points you have to create to make a nice curve. You can really make no mistake as all the points are individually editable. You can change the look of the zipper in the properties panel. There are multiple options to choose from. Next step was the stitching, so I made a new layer and I selected the top stitching tool from the brushes panel. I selected the size and color and just went on and created the stitching following the shape of the bag. I used the puckering tool exactly the same way. When I was done texturing, I exported the texture maps and the mesh as well to make sure everything is matching nicely. Just as a tip, you can check your work by sending it to Stage with a simple click. You can even create some nice renders with it if you like. I really like it that you can get really nice results super quickly with uh, Stage. Uh, here you can see that uh, how fast I created this uh, scene with my backpacks. So let's take a look how I created my model in Cinema 4D. After I imported the model, there was a lot of blank materials. If you see this, don't delete them because you can replace them with redshift materials and it's easier to keep track of the materials this way. Create a new redshift material and drop all the texture maps into the node editor. I started with the main part of the backpack. I connected the nodes to the right places, but we need a bit more stuff to make this work. You need a bump map node for the normal map and a displacement node for the haze map. In the bump map node settings, you have to change the map encoding to tangent space normal. I tested a few settings on this model and it turned out that the unbiased normal was closest to my aesthetic. You can flip the normal if you have to by checking this little box here. When you're ready with the material, just drag it onto the blank material, holding down the Alt button so it will replace the material with the one you made. I like to use it because it keeps me organized. To make the displacement work, you have to add the redshift uh, tag to your model. You can find it uh, if you right-click on the model, render text, and there is redshift object. You have to turn on tessellation and displacement, and you will notice that the surface uh, will change and the bumps appear. With these settings and the node settings, you can precisely control the displacement. I repeated this process on all parts of my model and it turned out really great at the end. For the scene setup, it's really simple. I used a simple backdrop and a cylinder with rounded edges and I put a substance material on both. Look at this nice tone material, it's really detailed and looks so real. For the lighting, I used an HDRI light from Substance Media Sets and some area lights to highlight the parts of the model from the opposite sides. I hope you like this video. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section and I will try to answer it as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.